It is time to remove the lower half of the lower spillway. It's Thursday, the 25th of May, and we've got a special exclusive live blasting going on today at noon. My name's Juan Brown, and you're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. Looks like they're still drilling the holes for blasting in the lower portion of the main spillway. I was hoping to see uh, them blow up this spillway today, but instead, what they're going to be blowing up is way up there on that knob they're going to continue to try and get that knob knocked back to increase worker safety in the canyon below so it looks like they're blasting their way into the spillway along each of the access roads that they've created they'll get into the spillway and then eat away at what's left of it once they get into the spillway there's a little bit of residual flow from the leaky gate still pouring down the right side of the spillway and into the canyon the lower road across the tail race here is completed now so they can run equipment back and forth across the entire operation we got a good 13,000 plus CFS flow coming out of the Hyatt power plant keeping the lake level to continue to drop as outflows exceed inflows slightly up there's a tall crane where I think they're gonna set up a concrete batch plant, one of two concrete batch plants. I think the other one is being set up on the boat ramp over by the emergency spillway. Down below here, barges are still moving lots of material out of here. And these huge spoil piles here, one of three, I believe is gonna be the material where they're gonna get the uh, busted up rocks mixed with roller compacted concrete to pour back into these holes and bring this spillway back up to grade with roller compacted concrete and then build a steel, steel reinforced spillway on top of that. Much replicating the original design. In the meantime for this year, contingency plans are if things don't go as planned, they'll continue to use this newly formed canyon as a way of releasing water out of here. Of course, repairs are going to go continue on the upper portion of the spillway, and the rest of that spillway will be repaired after next season. The blasting going on down here is a very low-level blasting, deep underground, and the dam is located way over there. About a half a mile away. Normally blasting here has been going on real early in the morning between 6 and 6.30 in the morning. They've got a live dam cam web feed now. It's a great source to uh, watch this blasting. And also the DWR is still sending up at least two drones every time they blast and posting some of that footage online as well. A big excavator over there knocking some of the edge off of that side of the canyon now. Little better view of the excavator knocking the edge off that canyon after some recent blasting. Potentially very dangerous work. Anytime you start working on these dams and spillways, heavy equipment. Some folks out here making sure the coast is clear for blasting. It's getting very quiet as they get ready to blast. Now you can hear that little bit of water that's still coming down the canyon through the leaky gates. 
you can see it shunted off to the right side of the spillway. Okay, there goes the horn. Two, three, four, five blasts. Five blasts of the horn. I hear the drones launching. So you're going to want to look up here in this next shot and then I'll get you some better views. Very cool. They're blasting way up high there. Sounds like a row of firecrackers from down here. Now let's go to the exclusive shaky cell phone footage. Very cool. They're blasting way up high there. Sounds like a row of firecrackers from down here. Kind of a non-event from this distance, but let's check out some of the DWR drone footage, and then we'll explain a little further some of the details of how this blasting is done and what they're using. Here's some much better footage provided by the official DWR drones of the same blast. Great shot and good job getting the audio file on top of the video footage. This next view from straight overhead, note the movement of the wall of the spillway. Now all that material is going to be much easier to move quickly. They still want to get this knob removed for below the blast for worker safety below and get this side of the spillway terraced somewhat like the left side of the spillway is presently terraced. Did you see the wall of the spillway flex slightly in that last angle? And finally a nice close-up view. Without a lot of material flying through the air, the charges are nice and deep. Time for a quick inspection before giving the all clear signal. Now this next video is from PA Mining. It gives a close up view of how these blasts are set up. The white baggie just chucked down the hole is emulsified ammonium nitrate in a waterproof bag. The yellow cord is the detonating cord, usually filled with PETN, explodes at a rate of about 6,400 meters per second. It can be used for timing explosive events with a silver blasting cap inserted on the end and that assembly inserted into a red piece of TNT and drop down the hole. Make sure it's all the way down to the bottom of the hole on top of your bag. And some of these holes can be so deep as to require multiple primer charges. 
to ensure a uniform blast. The blasting engineer, after studying the geology, determines how many holes and how deep and what the spacing of these holes will be for the blast. And of course, the amount of explosive to be used in each hole and the number of primers. Now he's gonna place another bag of emulsified ammonium nitrate on top of the primer charge. Now he's got to measure where that bag ended up to make sure that it made it all the way to the bottom of the hole without getting hung up. 45, 43, 43. It's got to sink a little bit. Now here comes the powder truck with the main explosive, ANFO, ammonium nitrate mixed with fertilizer and diesel fuel. Ammonium nitrate is the preferred explosive used these days as dynamite is too expensive and more unstable to use. That's a lot of ammonium nitrate. Now they stem the top of the hole with fine rocks to keep pressure on the explosives and keep it from all just flying out the top of the hole. Now let's go back to official DWR drone footage later on of the same day, May 25th, the blast I wanted to see in person, the spillway. which you can see is kind of a non-event, just enough to bust up that concrete so they can easily excavate it out of the way. Which ironically is why the mainstream media is not covering this event because there's just simply not enough mayhem for the mainstream media. Another view of the same shot from straight overhead. Interesting acoustics of the blast from inside the concrete spillway. Again, this audio was laid over the video because drones can't capture audio. All you'd hear is the whirring propellers of the drone. You can see too from this angle, the plan is to attack this spillway from each of these uh, roads, access roads, and then work up and down from there. And one last close-up view of this same shot. Again, kind of a non-event. You can see that the best seat in the house is going to be from these drone videos published by DWR. And here's what the lower spillway looked like the next day. Before they can start excavating, the drilling rig's got a hell of a lot more holes to drill and a lot more blasting to go before they begin excavating. And there's the new road completed below the tail race. Barges and excavators continue to pull debris out of the diversion pool, and this is a good point why, as much as we all like to see Croyle Canyon in action, why they really don't want to use that canyon as a main part of this spillway, because it's just too much work to keep this diversion pool clean of debris. 
And as we learned from this winter's emergency, any increase in elevation of this diversion pool threatens the Hyatt power plant. Here's the middle part of the spillway where much of the concrete has been removed. Once this is excavated down to competent bedrock, it'll be brought back up to grade with roller compacted concrete before they build a new reinforced concrete spillway on top of that. Now here's that area where we saw the excavator working right on the edge of the canyon in front of this crane which I believe is going to be the site of one of the concrete batch plants. So somehow they got to get the concrete from right up there on that pad down into the busted spillway. Watch these boys working so close to the edge. Okay, one last blast. I could just watch this stuff all day. This is on the 26th and the boys are getting a little more exuberant with the powder. This is that same spot on the edge of Croyle Canyon right in front of where that they want to put the new concrete batch plant. Looking straight down shot. Knocking a lot of material down into the canyon and you can see why you'd need to stay back a minimum of 1500 feet from these blasts. But remember too, the dam is nearly a half a mile away and not affected by this blasting. Stay tuned for future updates. I'll get you airborne in the mighty Luscombe to continue to monitor the demolition of the main spillway and the setup for the reconstruction. Meanwhile, I took a quick run up the high country to check on the snow. Most of the snow is all gone. I get all the way up to the top of the Quincy Laporte Road here and there's about four feet of snow left in the very highest part of the high country.